Hello, and welcome to your big day. The signing of your lease. Everyone here at the Barrington Group is excited. We are happy to have you, and we thank you for choosing this community for your new home. Now, we know that there are many choices, and all of us will work diligently to live up to your expectations. Oh, come on. Let's jump right into the unpacking and decorating, and honey, I want that over there. So, let's take a few minutes and go through the lease. All right, 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 right. So get the lease in your hand, and let's get started. The front page contains very specific information related to your specific lease term. The main thing to know is you are the lessee. The Barrington Group is the lessor. This page is jam-packed with details, so look at it closely to be sure everything is accurate before signing. Okay, so now we can clarify a few important items on this page. Would you like to assist? I'd be delighted. Our first topic. The lease term. When your lease ends, it will automatically renew on a month-to-month -month basis unless you give your 30-day notice to leave or they give you one. Good to know. Next, occupant classifications. The leaseholder is the person who lives in the apartment and is financially responsible. You mean the one whose credit score improves with great on-time rent payments? The very one. The occupant, the person that lives in the apartment and is bound by the community policies but is not financially responsible. Sounds good to me. And yet there's more. Non-occupant leaseholder. This person is financially responsible but does not live there, like a guarantor. Ah, now that's a nice person. Next, rent. Very important to understand. When to pay and what happens if you don't. I got this one. The rent is due on the 1st. You have three days to pay with no late fee. A late fee is added on the 4th. Once that happens, your rent will not be accepted without that added fee. You can pay with a check or a money order by mail or in person. You can also pay online using a credit card or bank card, but if you use a credit card or bank card, the usage fees may be added. If your check is returned for non-sufficient funds, the additional fee stated in your lease will be added on top of the late fee. If that happens more than two times, no more personal checks accepted. A full month of rent is due at move-in, regardless of the move-in date. The following month will be prorated. You did a very nice job with that. Oh my goodness, thank you. You're welcome. See, leases aren't so bad. Next up is your signature. All leaseholders will be required to sign the lease. By signing, you are acknowledging receipt of a copy of the lease and that you understand and have read all pages of the lease. This is a legal document you are signing. Don't hesitate to ask your property manager any questions. Yes. Questions are good. Ask questions. Like, where does helium come from? Please read your lease. I'm Joey. I'm Christine. We are here to brilliantly act our way through the next page of your lease. <gasps> Can we get an acting award for this? No. Oh. Here I am coming to the manager to pay my rent late. Nope, not good. I actually don't have to accept this. But why? Um, because you're late. You have all these options for paying listed on your lease. Read it. And FYI, your rental payments will always be applied in the following order. First, any damage. Second, late charges. Third, delinquent rent. Then balance to current rent. Okay, the takeaway from this? Pay, pay your, your rent, rent on, on time. time. Oh my god, we are so Very good. Nice. I know. I, I like was, okay, this. It was good. Thank you. You might consider keeping it. Okay. This is the You Break It, You Bought It segment. I'm the lessee, and Joey is playing my apartment. Ow! That hurts! I've damaged my apartment! So, folks, as your apartment, don't hurt me. Be good to me. But if you or someone living with you does damage me, that is what the damage deposit is for. If you are kind and good and don't hurt me, then within 30 days after you move out, your manager will return your deposit. Otherwise, you will have to pay for dents, holes, dings, scrapes, and yes, bruises. <laughs> and don't even think of trying, but my damage deposit can be my last month's rent. That's a no. Correct, a big no. no. 
Hi, who are you? I'm the default clause. Is that like Santa Claus? Uh, no. Oh. I'm here because the lessee was either late in rent, three days, broke one of the community rules, or abandoned their apartment for more than 10 days. I can declare an end to this lease, and even if they are evicted by court order, they are still on the hook for the full term of the lease. Ouch! My takeaway, this is an important clause. What are you doing? I'm writing a check. For what? Well, I'm the lessee, and I'm late with the rent, and there may be other problems. And since management had to contact an attorney, I have to pay all the attorney fees and court costs. Whoa, I should have gone to law school. You wanted to see me? Yes, Mr. Lessee. We're going over your application and it seems some of this information is false. Oh, no. You mean you found what I wrote that was incorrect, misleading, or untrue? Yes, indeed we did. And I am now engaged in my option to give you 30 days notice to leave the premises. Oh, no. And scene. Good job. Thank you. Students, listen closely. If you have signed your lease and you can't move in... Ooh, ooh, ooh! Because the apartment isn't ready or the lessee before you hasn't vacated? Right. Then you don't have to move in and you don't have to pay the rent. However, if something isn't right and you do move in... Ooh, ooh, ooh! Then the lessor will do everything in its power to correct the issue. But by moving in, you take possession and need to... Pay the days will be held to all terms of the lease agreement. A plus. Hey, where are you going? I'm moving out. Are you going to get your full deposit back? I sure am. Oh, but how? Well, I gave 30 days notice. The carpets are pretty clean, no stains. There are no stickers or holes in the walls, and I cleaned the place, and it looks good. Wow, okay. I even gave them my forwarding address so they can mail my deposit check to me. I've returned my keys and finalized all my other bills, like the water bill. Nice, but what would have happened if you hadn't gone through the entire lease? Well, I would have had to notify the manager so they can start the process of re-renting the space. And then I'd have to pay those fees called re-letting fees. And then I'd pay for any other damages on top of that. Well, I am sorry to see you go. <laughs> I'd like to return these, please. Um, this one can be returned. It has a little wear, but that's okay. This one, however, is a bit trashed, and you're actually going to have to pay us to fix these holes and make it look better. Oh, I get it. It's like these represent my apartment, and if I leave it in good shape, I'm fine. Otherwise, I have to pay. And if the security deposit isn't enough, I may be billed for more. You're good. And yes, you only have 10 days to pay that bill. Thanks for shopping with us. You're welcome. Take that. No, you take it. I don't want them. Fireworks! Get your fireworks here! Hey, hey, uh, what are you doing? I'm starting my own fireworks company. A homegrown business. You do realize that you can't run a business out of your apartment, right? No. And you definitely cannot have or store firearms, gasoline, or explosives of any kind, right? No. I am definitely not running a business out of my apartment. I want to keep my home. So if you just take this. Okay. You just, just go. You, okay. You've done enough. No! Just say no to subletting! And even if you get a new roommate, you must have them screened. Wow, this is a nice apartment. I am going to take care of you and keep you in the same condition that you're in. Who are you? I'm the 24-hour emergency maintenance service technician. I can be reached through the phone number you can get from your manager. Wow, that's awesome! Yes, I am. But what is an actual service emergency, Mr. Maintenance Service Technician? 
Any power outage that is not a result of the local utility. Any water leak that cannot be contained until the following morning and therefore may cause damage. Any sewer backup or non-working toilet if there is only one toilet in your home. No heat or air conditioning if the outside temperature is above 80 degrees or below 50 degrees. Wow, you are cerebral. Yes, I am. Bye, Mr. Service Technician Man. What did you come up with for this section? You accept responsibility for your smoke alarms. That means checking them, replacing batteries, and placing a service request if they don't work. Bravo. Thanks. And now a public service announcement from our newest candidate for mayor. Hello, fellow citizens. I'm here to speak about personal responsibility. We all have it. It's personal. It's our responsibility. Responsibility that is personal. Christine, you have no idea what this segment is about, do you? No. Okay, in a nutshell, you have to take responsibility for being safe. There are no guarantees, and no one is saying this community is any safer than another. You have to be aware and conscious of your surroundings. There is no master key that works in all the apartments, so we are doing our best, and you need to do your part as well. Kind of feels good up here. Knock, knock. It's your friendly management team member. Your upstairs neighbor has a leak. Yeah, come on in. Oh, what is with all this water on the floor? I know, it's pouring through the ceiling. Why didn't you call the resident service center? I have to mop the floors anyway, so I... Don't let this happen to you. Call to report any maintenance needs. In an emergency situation such as this, we will respond immediately. Uh, of course, if you are not home, we have the right to enter because it is an emergency. Gonna need some paper towel. Let's play. The first category is pets. <gasps> pets have rules too. Uh, if you have any pets, you need to speak with the manager. Oh, you will have to complete a special pet addendum. Just like people, if pets break the rules, they are out. Window coverings. Oh, I love curtains with floral patterns and roses. Uh, uh, if you want to change them, you take the current blinds down, store them, and hang them back up when you move out. <sighs> Smarty. Well, did you know whatever you add has to have a white backing? Boom. Great job, contestants. The next category is... Water beds. Best if on the top floor. If you have a water bed, it must be specifically insured. Smaller boom. Vehicles and parking. Ooh. Only wash and repair your car off premise. Only park pulling front in. <gasps> Cars and motorcycles must always park in designated spaces. Must have proper tags and the vehicles need to be in working order. Violators will be towed at the owner's sole risk and expense. This goes for guests too. Carports and garages. If you paid for it, you can park in it. And sign the special addendum. Signs. Uh, don't post any. Antennas. Don't install any. Satellite dishes. If you insist on a satellite dish, there are very specific rules on size, installation, liability, and insurance. Management will remove them if they are installed improperly. Especially if your installer damages our property. The lessee will be charged for all repairs. Trash. Tie it up, put it in the proper location, and if you don't know where, ask. Exterior patios, balconies, or common areas. Your patio or balcony is a nice part of your home. You can place furniture, plants, so long as it's maintained nicely. Nothing in common areas, and you cannot make your patio or balcony a storage area. And ask management about your ability to store or use a grill. Great job, contestants. Interior common halls. No personal items. No loitering. You can't let your kids play in them. Next up, doors. No stickers or names on doors. And no decorations unless authorized in writing. Flammables. Oh, I know this one. No fireworks, kerosene, or gasoline. No corrosives. No explosives or firearms allowed at all. And please don't store anything around a furnace. Decorating. Ooh, me, me. Uh, just remember, if you paint the walls when you move out, you have to paint them back to the condition they were in when you moved in. Or if you added wallpaper, you have to remove that. Pictures and plant hooks. Small holes, please. No adhesives. No drilling. You could hit a pipe. 
Three M command strips work great. When in doubt, ask your manager. Excellent. Disposable items. Don't put anything down the toilet except for toilet paper. Next up, electric light bulbs. They will be working when you move in. You will replace them when they burn out. Landscaping and exterior building care. The lessor is responsible solely for the landscaping. Please do not add personal items in it like decorative fences or even cute ceramics. Uh, and you can't leave toys or bikes laying outside or maintenance will clean it up and throw them away. The next category is air conditioners. You can't add window units and please do not store anything around the existing air handler or outside fan unit or it will not work properly. Children. I'm gonna have several. You are expected to supervise them, even your guests' children, at all times. Good job. Locks and keys. If they need to be changed, only the lessor can replace the locks and keys. Uh, management reserves the right to enter your home for any reason with 24-hour notice. Lockout charges. If you lock yourself out of your apartment after business hours and we need to let you in, you will be assessed $25 and you will be required to identify yourself? Yes. Repairs. Overall, please don't fix anything on your own. Place a service request through the Resident Service Center and we will do it for you. Private work of employees. You can't hire the maintenance men to do private work for you during or after hours. Waste of water. Uh, conserve water. If you see a leak, report it. If toilets are running for longer than normal, jiggle the handle and then report it. Uh, conservation saves us all money. Peaceful enjoyment. Be mindful of your neighbors by keeping sound to a minimum on the inside and the outside too. Be mindful of loud speakers and cars, playing music outside, musical instruments, television, basically anything you can turn up, be mindful of. So, um, did we win something? Yeah, like a prize, like a car, like a Ferrari? Not a thing, but you're both winners. Thanks for playing. We are winners. Thank you, Ken. I'm here on the scene of a fire with a resident of the complex. What happened, sir? Well, I smelled smoke and I thought, what? And then I heard yelling and I was like, what? And then I saw flames and me and my family bounced. Uh, did you lose all of your belongings, sir? Yes, I did. And I've been assured that I will not be responsible to pay rent during the time it takes to repair our place. And if it's really bad, they will help me relocate. And what about renter's insurance for your personal property? I'm fully covered with my renter's insurance. And it was so inexpensive, I'm glad I did that. Well, that's good news indeed. Back to you at the station. Ken? This subordination clause is not about insubordination at all. No siree. It simply states that if this community is sold or changes hands, it doesn't matter none. Your lease will always remain intact and valid and enforceable. Now, back to my day. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, it clearly states in your lease that if you file for bankruptcy, you must exclude this lease. Exclude. So if you attempt to include your lease and your required payments in a bankruptcy filing, then your lease will be terminated and you will have to vacate immediately. Case dismissed. Okay, gang, let's get stretched and ready for an amazing high-energy workout. But there is this notion of lease compliance to get out into the air. Very simply, you get to comply to all the sections of your lease at all times. So if a manager maybe bends the rules maybe once, that doesn't mean they will again. Or if an amenity is not available, you are still bound by the lease agreement to pay your rent. Okay? Enough talk. Let's work out. Folks, I want you to really look at this beautiful clause. It's simple, but it really makes a strong statement. And you won't believe the price. Let me just say, from me to you, 
right through that television screen that some cities establish provisions or rules that owners must follow when dealing with city provided services, such as roadways, curbs, trash, but, but, this property is privately owned, yes. That is including all the roads and is therefore not bound by these city's provisions. What did I tell you? Amazing, right? Good day, mates. Did you know that mold is a natural living organism and is essential to a healthy environment? It's everywhere, inside, outside, but we want to be sure we do all we can to control mold in your apartment. So listen closely. Here are six easy steps on controlling mold in your dwelling. One, keep surfaces clean, like countertops. Two, don't leave wet objects lying around, like bath towels. Three, wipe down showers and windowsills. Four, watch closely for leaks of any kind and call your residence service center quickly if you see something. Five, use your vacuum cleaner often and have it contain a HEPA filter. And finally, six, use all of your exhaust fans. Mold may be a natural organism out in nature, but we don't want it in our homes. Now, there are many different types of knives, all of which I'm going to show you right now. Oh, yuck, bed bugs! Well, Lessie, you acknowledged before you moved in that you inspected for bed bugs and that the apartment is free of bed bugs. <laughs> yeah, but I am. So now that you suspect bed bug activity, you need to report it to management immediately. <sighs> we will have a professional inspector come in, and if bed bugs are confirmed, you agree to cooperate with the extermination process, and you are responsible to pay for the cost of cleaning your belongings. But I am neat and tidy, and I would never. Now, now, we can tell if your apartment is the origin of the bed bug infestation infestation or not. <gasps> infestation? Yes, infestation. And you will be responsible for all the costs. Oh, well, I did pick up that vintage chair off the street last month. <laughs> no, don't let this happen to you. And if you fail to cooperate with the extermination procedure, your lease will be terminated and we will exercise our right to force you to leave. But the chair was so cute. Just say no to bed bugs. <sighs> Thank you. Okay, goodbye, folks. Thanks to all of our guests on the show. And just know that if any section of your lease becomes void or unenforceable, that doesn't mean the entire lease is void. That's right. So if anything changes on your lease or if any of the law changes in your state, the rest of your lease doesn't change. It doesn't change. So don't go changing. Thanks for watching. And, and have, have a great, great moving day. day.